Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll create a newsfeed program that'll create a weekly reading list for you at the start of every week. You can use the program to aggregate content from multiple sources that you find interesting. The program will be automated and scheduled so that it runs every Sunday and sends you an email with recent article from all sources that you're interested in. You can then use the program such as Pocket or Raindrop to create a mood board containing all your articles. Not only can you read these articles at your convenience during the week, you can even have them archived on Raindrop or Pocket so that you always have something to read whenever you have the time. So without waiting any longer, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the architecture of what we're going to uh, be designing. And once we are familiar with that, we're going to dive uh, deeper into the code. I have most of the code, uh, which we're going to take a look at together. These are pretty basic web scraping. Uh, so I have other videos in the channel too for how to do web scraping. So you should be pretty familiar with these at, uh, at this point. After that, I'm also going to show you the end product, how things look like and uh, how do I use it. So that being said, the first thing is the architecture diagram. So over here, you can see we have all the different sources. Right now, we have two that are programming related. We have two from personal finance. We have two more health and fitness related. And uh, we have two that are lifestyle related. These sources can be literally whatever website you're interested in. All you have to do is write a small, small function to scrape it. Uh, and given the examples that I'll already have for you, uh, scraping it should be very straightforward. We have a Python scraper over here, which just uses basic HTTP and a package called Beautiful Soup to scrape these websites and find the articles. Once we have the articles, we're going to use Mailgun API to just send an email to ourselves, uh, which is going to be one email with all articles uh, that have been posted recently in all websites that we're interested in. So that's step one. Once we have it, what you can do is go through that every Sunday or at the start of week and pick the ones that you actually want to read later on. You can use something like this. Uh, this is an, a free app called Raindrop. Uh, you have a browser extension, so every article that you find interesting, you can just add it to your inbox. Once you add it to the inbox, Rain, Raindrop gives you this beautiful mood board view where you can have all your articles that you want to read later on. So whenever you have the time, you can just come here and pick article uh, from the inbox save them from for later on or do whatever you want with them. So now that we saw the end product and the what's that called and the uh, architecture diagram, let me show you the code and what we have. So I'm going to delete the intro that I have over here. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in one level. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to just go through the code over here. At first, we have all the packages that we're importing. Mm. Uh, one thing just to mention, I'll have the whole code and the GitHub repository linked in the description below. So if you want to use it for yourself, feel free to just uh, pull the data and start using it. So the packages we need are the random package. We need the requests package to make the API calls. We're going to use beautiful soup to do the parsing. And we have a name tuple just to store uh, an article data. Uh, we in initialize a, a name tuple called article with two fields, title and link. We have all the uh, websites over here that we're interested in. The code that's going to be linked in the description will have way more uh, websites. So I would recommend using that rather than what I have over here. And then I have individual functions for each of the website, uh, which are fundamentally doing the same thing. So let's just look at the Netflix one. So we make the requests uh, to the Netflix engineering website. We turn the response into a soup, which will give us the ability to parse it more easily. And then over here, we pretty much parse the website by looking at different div, picking div by the class, 
or just selecting the a tag based on their attribute all these are going to be in the documentation in the code and i have more basic uh, uh, web scraping videos uh, that I uploaded a few months ago, which you can find very helpful too. So this does all the scraping and then we just pick the first four articles because odds are um, you just need, if you're doing this every week, I think you would only be interested in the first few. For the football tactics articles, we do something similar uh, where we have different pages. So we have the base URL and then we have page two and page three. For each of the, we go through each of the page and then do the same thing, which is do the parsing, find the div or anchor tag that we're interested in, and then uh, we randomly choose three from here. The reason being the football tactics articles are not very time sensitive. Uh, it's not that the recent ones are significantly more cutting edge or important than the older ones. So I just want to randomly choose three from, uh, I think, uh, around 200 that we have over there. Uh, and if I find them interesting, I can just sort them on Raindrop. One thing that's interesting over here is the headers over here. The reason we're doing this is when you are going to a website using a Python script like this, a lot of the websites won't complain at all. You can just do it easily like we did for Netflix. But some websites will have a uh, check to make sure it's not a bot, like this is a bot because it's coming from a script. And the way they check that is by making sure there is a header in the request. Because uh, if you're going to Uber or Netflix.com from a browser, the browser is going to append a header called user agent to your request, which tells the backend which browser the request is coming from. Uh, and if it does not, if the website does not find a header, like a user agent, uh, it might just uh, just like ignore your request because it knows it's from a bot. So over here, we're just mimicking that by explicitly setting the user agent to a browser. In this in this case, in this case, we're doing a Firefox. All right, so that's done, and then we go ahead and do it, and then we choose three randomly. Similarly, for Financial Samurai, same drill. We make the request, user agent, go through it, and then choose the first four. Mellowed, very, very similar. We literally just go to the container that contains all the articles. We're choosing it by, it's going to be an article HTML tag with the class, this one. And then we find all our anchor tags, uh, and each of the anchor tag has a title and an href. Manual article, same thing. Uh, anything new here? Nope, it's the same drill pretty much. So for all, it's pretty straightforward. We either find the upper level container, and then from that container, we find all the anchor tags, or we directly just go ahead and find all the anchor tags. This totally depends on the website, so you want to look at the HTML structure before starting to write your function. All right, so let's see. We don't need this anymore. Okay. So this should give us all the articles that we care about. And then we have the Netflix articles, football, financial samurai, mellowed, and the manual. We categorize them. So the software engineering articles are gonna be the Netflix articles. Um, and then the football articles is gonna be right now only one. Finance is the same, only one. Health articles, the same. Productivity, right now we only saw one. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete this. Once again, the code linked in the description will have much more uh, sources, so that is going to be more extensive. The printing, this should give us how many articles it scraped from each of the, uh, each of the websites. And now the email construction, it's pretty much going to be text saying here's all your recent articles. Then we're going to have something uh, text saying software engineering and then for each of the software engineering articles, we have the title and the link. Football, same thing. Finance, same thing. Health, and then productivity. So we have the productivity or lifestyle. So we have the same uh, logic for all of them. We have another text just saying bookmark the ones you plan on reading later. And then this is where we are sending the email out. 
what we're doing is we're calling, uh, we're using Mailgun, uh, which is a service that lets you uh, send emails through an API. So this is uh, the URL. Uh, we need the auth API token, so you can get this from your Mailgun dashboard once you create an account on Mailgun. And then we have the data, which is going to be from, this is just a Mailgun mailbox. Two, this is just my own email to uh, so that I can email it to myself. A subject, and then the email body, which is going to be everything we wrote over here. So that's pretty much going to be the whole program. So we're scraping, aggregating, sending ourselves an email. So let's see how one of these emails is going to look like. All right, so let's see. Easier way to move this. Oh my. Move it to the side. Okay, so we're just gonna maximize it over here. All right, there you go. So we have like the weekly articles collection, and we have all of them over here. So what we could do is let's just go to this and this one. It's gonna open it. We have the whole article over here. If we like it, we can just, this is the extension for Raindrop. We can just do this. And I already added it on October 17th. So if not, you can just add it again. Once you do that, you'll have your Raindrop over here. The thing, so you are what you can see them over here. So you'll have all the articles over here. Uh, yeah, I think I've covered most of the things. So we went through the program. Oh, one other thing is remember i mentioned this is going to automatically run every uh sunday so let's see how we want to schedule that so what you could do is uh over here it's just a very basic bash script what it's doing is it's going to the location where the script is it's uh and activating the uh, virtual environment so that all the packages are installed and then we're just calling the news demo.py file, which is the file over here. So this is a bash script that you can write. And then once you have the bash script, what you could do is, uh, there's something called cron. So it's the file and it's a, it's a file where you can schedule different tasks to run at different times. So you can uh, add this one line in the cron tab, cron tab file which is going to be every, uh, where, what's it yeah. So this is the command it's going to run, which is going to be pretty much the bash script you wrote. And it's going to, this is how you uh, specify when this is going to run. So let's see what this actually means. So we could go to, I think it's called contact. Yeah. So if we just put this over here, there you go. So what this means is every day at 17.30, which is 5.30, your computer is going to run this command, which is going to be pretty much executing the uh, script that you wrote over here. This is, this is a very easy way you can schedule anything to run on your computer at specific times. Uh, without you needing to run it manually every single time. So it's very easy. It's very uh, helpful when you need to automate anything like uh, we are doing over here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all I had. So hopefully this was helpful and hopefully this helps you discover and learn uh, more and more information by going through various articles. Once again, I will have the code linked in the description below. Feel free to pull uh, the code and then run it for yourself, or you can just automate it by uh, writing the cron tab, the cron job that I showed you before. With that being said, hopefully this was helpful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye bye.